So opportunities to respond in my lessons are integrated really purposefully when I'm planning my lessons. We use individual whiteboards, they do a think-pair-share quite frequently, raising hands, putting your hands on your head or your shoulders to indicate yes or no, red and green cards to have a yes, no answer, and I think it's important to have a range of verbal and non-verbal ways to communicate. I'm constantly checking in with them, checking that they know, they understand the learning intention. This can be through just questioning or getting the children to turn and talk to one another, to share their ideas. I also do a lot of feedback strategies, so like thumbs up, thumbs down. It really helps get rid of that anxiety. If they're unsure, they can talk through with someone, share their ideas, and then even if they haven't had an opportunity to share to the class, they've then at least shared with a partner. So a few different cues I have to use. So I usually, especially with the younger grades, we'd like to count down from three. So we'll start cueing the kids so they understand what's coming next. We just start to pay attention. We need to concentrate and look up at the screens. Sometimes getting the kids out of their seats, walking around and moving, that helps a lot. It heightens kids' attention in the lesson, which ultimately is leading to higher engagement as well. Advice I'd give to teachers would be embed this in your teaching, like embed it in your planning. So plan for the different ways that you're going to question students, how are you going to engage the whole class in the content, because if you link those opportunities to respond you know, to your learning objectives, um, you can clearly see which students have understood a topic, who needs more support. It's always taking the time to stop, teach and acknowledge those things and picking up the skills and giving the kids and the young people the skills they need to not only work in a learning environment, but learn in life.